All right, hopefully you have watched my other videos on radicals that the only way you can do any kind of computations is they have to have the same value under these radicals. And we certainly can see that they do not. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out with these square roots how we could break them down. Well, I know that 99 is 11 times 9. And then I also know 9 is 3 times 3. So remember with a square root, when you have two of them, one of them comes out and then that's all that's left. Don't forget this 6 there though. And that's being multiplied. So I'll throw that out front. This next one I know could be 2 times 4 and then 2 times 2. So it looks like I'm going to take out 1, 2, but then I am left with that 2. Uh, the 18 could be 2 times 9 and then 9, 3 times 3. So I'm pulling out 1, 3 and I'm left with the square root of 2. And then finally, 44 could be 11 times 4. And that's 2 times 2. So I'm definitely pulling out 1, 2. And then I'm left with the square root of 11. Um, this can become 18 square roots of 11 minus 2 square roots of 2 plus 3. I'm just bringing all this down. Now the only one ones of, ones of these, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, that I can combine are the ones that have like terms, meaning what's under the radical. So I can actually do 18 minus 2, which would be 16. And remember, the radical stays the same. And then I can do negative 2 plus 3, or 3 minus 2, which is 1. And remember, you don't have to write the 1 because it's just understood that it's there. I mean, you can if you want. So you can either write it that way or simply this. So I had to break down those radicals to find any of these that might have like terms that then I can combine.